Being a private investigator means two things. You can be sure you'll run into trouble, and you can never be sure you'll get out of it. Well, there's not much you can do about it, I guess. Except, like Julie always says... Walk softly, Peter Troy. And now Peter Troy investigates the doll with the dreamy disposition. This girl, Julie, is what scriptwriters call a force to be reckoned with, especially in a tight corner. Well, I guess you know all about that if you've been following the misadventures of Peter Troy. Yes, indeedy. Quite a girl is Julie. Nice eyes, nice figure, nice disposition, too, most of the time. Talking of dispositions brings me to another girl. This one's called Anita Brophy. Dreamy is the operative word. That same dreamy look a tiger gets just after it's eaten a couple of stray white hunters. Yeah, dreamy. Everything about Anita was dreamy. Anita. Anita, you all right? I think so, Papa. You saw what happened? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I couldn't avoid that car. He cut right across me. Mm-hmm. Driver must have been a maniac. Came out of that side street like a rocket. Oh, this is terrible. He sure beats the twist for kicks, Papa. Well, you stay here. I'll see what happened to the driver of that jalopy. Someone send for the police. Oh, my husband just went to call them. Ah, good. I'm going to sue the driver of that car. He came out of that side street like a maniac. I'll get him jailed for... Oh, what's the matter? What are you all staring at? The driver, is he... Is he hurt? He's dead. Dead. Steering wheel. Dead. Uh, it wasn't my fault. You saw what happened. Negligent driving on his part. Dead. Anyone know him? Yes, I recognize the boy. Johnny Michaelis's son. Michaelis? Everything all right, Papa? You stay where you are, Anita. I'm coming back into the car. Gee, Papa, you look like you just saw a ghost or something. I, I just killed a boy. The driver's dead? Yeah. Golly, but it wasn't your fault. That isn't going to matter very much. What do you mean? The dead boy is, is Johnny Michaelis' son. Michaelis, I've heard that name. So is the whole of London. I remember now. He's a gangster. Biggest in England. Gangster and a killer. Like Chicago. Worse. Worse in Chicago. He's going to be after me, Anita. He's the type that'll kill first and ask questions afterwards. <laughs> It was all over the papers next morning, screaming headlines about Johnny Michaelis' son's death. Anything that touched on Michaelis was headline material, and this tragedy was proof positive that the man actually existed. That was something in itself, because a lot of people had the idea that he was one of Mr. Aesop's fables. He'd been too much, done too much, and the law had never been able to nail him since he came to England in 1953. But his history of crime and intrigue started way before that. Michaelis was an international crook in the grand tradition. He'd been a spy, counter-spy, dope smuggler, killer. You name it, he'd done it. Finally, he'd set down in London town, organized local crime, and settled in to give Inspector Morris Caswell a king-sized headache. So the headlines and the reason why the driver of the other car hadn't been mentioned by name. The newspaper men knew it would be like signing the guy's death warrant. And speaking about warrants, Pete, there'll huh? be one out for a certain Canadian private investigator unless he does something pretty drastic about the bill for renovating this office. Ah, uh, well, um, how drastic? Like talking to the client that's sitting outside waiting for an interview. Oh, what's she like? Mm. American, big, chunky, smoking a fat cigar under a walrus moustache and reeking of money. Huh? It's a he, not a she. Oh, no. You and your single-track mind. The Brophy of Brophy Steel and Pig Iron, Cincinnati, Ohio. So? So see him, if you want to stay solvent. Okay, wheel him in. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Troy, we'll see you now, Mr. Brophy. Thanks. Ah, uh, take a seat, Mr. Brophy. Your secretary... I should be taking notes. Yeah, yeah well, uh, well, this is kind of confidential. Well, Miss Summers is a confidential secretary. 
Yeah. Well, I guess it's okay. You got troubles, Mr. Brophy? The biggest. Okay. Well, supposing we start from the beginning, huh? It's right here in this morning's newspaper. No, oh, thanks, but I've already got a copy. Did you read the front page? Headlines? Yeah. I was the driver of the other car, Mr. Troy. Oh. But I was completely exonerated from all blame. That that kid is driving like a maniac. The police have it completely cleared me. Well, well, what are you worrying about? Johnny Michaelis' only son is dead. He's not going to care if I'm exonerated or not. He's going to come after me. Could be. So, I want the bodyguard. Uh, Julie, give Mr. Brophy his hat and show him to the door, please. Now, hey, now, hold on a minute. Now, London Jay, has got... a police force second to none, Mr. Brophy. Yeah, yeah, I Thousands know, but Thousands of big, husky, competent officers dedicated to keeping law and order and protecting people from killers like McKay. I know all about and that, And my name you... is Peter Troy, not Gun. Now, what's that got to do now, with I don't it? fancy myself lighting out with a brace of blazing guns in my hot little hands while... Michaelis' boys fill me full of machine gun bullets. All right, all right. But the man kills people like you and I swat flies. So I've heard. So you'll understand why I'm declining. But you didn't let You're me finish. You're wasting your time, Mr. Brophy. The bodyguard's not for me. The police have got me well and truly covered. Huh? That's my daughter, Anita. <laughs> daughter? Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, I can't play wet nurse to a little girl. She's I've got... over 21. 20... Oh, that job will take you less than nine hours. I'll pay you four hundred dollars, um, um, two hundred pounds plus expenses. Two hundred pounds. Huh? Now look, look, I got her hidden away. All you got to do is to collect her and see she gets on the eleven p.m. plane to New York. Two hundred pounds plus expenses. Just get her onto that plane without Michaelis knowing about it. Um, look, I've got a photograph of her right here. Sheesh. Well, dreamy. You're going to take the job, Troy, or do I get someone else? Uh, where have you got her tucked away, Mr. Brophy, and uh, how do I get there? Oh, no, this is one time you don't leave me behind. Yeah, but Julie... You need a chaperone along on this trip, my boy. Oh, cut it out. She's just a kid. Mm -hmm. And those were the cutest rompers she was wearing in that photo. So it was a hot day. And that dreamy come-hither look, that's not part of the kindergarten curriculum. That's something she learned all on her own, son. Of course, you know you're nothing more than a sports sport, don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And may I ask why we're waiting on this street corner? For Kev. But your car's just... Kalis a... could have already tagged my car... Uh, so we get the cab to drive us to a rent-a-car place. Ah. Uh, you get it? Got it. Good. I want... Uh, hey, taxi. Uh, Pete. Hmm? There's someone in here. Hello, Troy. Oh. I thought you'd be needing a cab. Inspector Caswell. So I hailed this one on the corner and told him to come straight round to couldn't be that this bit of clairvoyance had anything to do with George Brophy coming to my office, huh? Well, no, as a matter Now, why don't you lay off me, Caswell? I'm just trying to make a living. We have the most disagreeable bill collectors, Inspector. Look, I'm only trying to save you a lot of trouble. We've got Brophy well and truly shadowed, but um, his daughter... Yeah, that's my department. Uh, if you were to tell me where Brophy has a hit... You're wasting your time. Now, if you don't mind, i If gotta... they don't get him, they'll get his daughter, you know. I will personally see she doesn't come to any harm. Now, look, Brophy knew what he was doing when he came to me. He wants his daughter taken out of the country, nice and quiet. Exactly, and we... And he see... doesn't want a stack of your fellows cluttering up the scene. Now, look, Caswell, it's like pointing a signpost to where his daughter stashed away. Well, let's get on with it, huh? All right, Troy. I suppose you know what you're doing. I suppose I do. Good luck. Thanks. Where to, mister? Uh, just take off, driver, and cruise around a little... I'll tell you where we're going when I've made up my mind. Here we are, mister. The Apex Rent-A-Car Service. Thanks. What's the damage? 18 Bob. We were cruising round. So who's complaining? Here, keep the change. Buy a new back seat. That one's got no springs. Hey, thanks, Gov. Spec the old bus is getting a bit wonky. Come on, Julie. Mm -hmm. Well, if there was anyone following us, we must have surely given them the slip by now, Pete. Yeah, I guess so. Is this taxi engaged driver? It's all yours, miss. Oh. Thank you. Everything all right, Johnny? Everything's fine. You managed to keep on our tail, huh? 
But of course. I'll leave my car back there for the time being. I got a bit of a shock when Inspector Caswell hailed me. But he wanted me to go around to pick up Troy. Isn't that a joke, huh? Troy in there, renting a car? Yes, we'll <laughs> see him when he comes out in it. Then we keep on his tail and hope he leads us straight to Anita Brophy. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing. I do. But his daughter... The police think I'll go after him. But Brophy killed my son. So he's going to lose his daughter. Johnny, that won't bring Rick back to life. No. But it'll make Brophy suffer just as I'm suffering. He killed my kid. The newspaper said it was Rick's fault, Johnny. He killed my kid. So now Troy's going to lead me right to Brophy's daughter. Huh? You want to know something, Veronique? What? This will make you laugh, my dear. When we drove off, Troy told me to cruise around for a while. He wanted to be sure to lose Johnny Michaelis if he was following. Wouldn't he have been surprised if he'd known Johnny Michaelis was driving his taxi? George Brophy had told me his daughter was at the Royal George Hotel in Faversham, Kent. All I had to do was pick her up, bring her back to London surreptitiously, and get her to the airport in time to catch that 11 p.m. plane to New York. It sounded simple enough. But I had a feeling it wouldn't stay simple for much longer. I knew Michaelis's boys would be watching Brophy's every move. Caswell had given me the tip off in that score. Now, they'd have seen him come to my Chelsea office. They'd know I'd become involved. Well, at the Apex Rent-A-Car place, I hired an unobtrusive little saloon. Julie, the self-appointed chaperone, and I got into the car. I was just going to press the starter when something started me to thinking. Well, what are you waiting for, Pete? We haven't got all day, you know. A trip in the taxi. Oh. Uh, what about it? So far as I can see, we weren't followed. Good. We didn't want to be, did we? Right from the moment we took off, we weren't followed. Okay, so? So we should have been. What? Honey, Michaelis would be watching Brophy, right? Well, yes. One of his men must have seen us get into that cab. But we weren't followed. And we should have been. Mm. Which means what? The taxi. Now, Caswell said he picked it up at the corner. Yeah. Coincidence? Or was that cab waiting for me? Michaelis? Mm hmm. Yes, it could be. Either him or one of his gunmen. Well, that means they're around here somewhere. Yeah. And that means they'll follow us. Oh, gosh. Well, what do we do? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, honey. Uh -huh. We're going to let them follow us. Oh, great. Now, all you have to do is keep your eyes glued to the rear vision mirror. Let me know about any car that hangs onto our tail for more than a couple of miles. Peter, it must be that white sports car. It's been following us for the last four or five miles. Uh-huh. You see who's driving? A girl. I can't see anyone else in it. Well, someone could be on the floor in the back. I suppose so. After all, you couldn't be suspicious of just a girl following you. No. They give you a road map of these uh, rental cars? I don't know. Well, have a look, honey, huh? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, there's one here in the glove locker here. Okay, open it up now and keep your eyes out for a side road close by. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Oh, it's further along, honey. Oh, sorry. Yes, let's see... Oh, yes, yes. There's one about a mile further on. Well, left or right? Oh, that's no good. It's a dead end. Well, that's perfect. But I don't understand. I couldn't lose them in this little jalopy, so I've got to dissuade them somehow. Oh, Pete, really? And just keep a lookout. You see the turn off yet? Oh. Uh, yes, there, on the left. Okay, hold on to your bonnet. Oh, look, Pete, if we were to call Caswell at the next phone booth, That's not be... one of your brighter ideas, honey. Here we go. Make sure they follow us round. I can't see yet. Well, keep watching. Oh, yes, here they come. Okay, that does it. We're being tailed, all right. 
And you're going to run out of road very soon. That's right, honey. Now, just brace yourself. Why? Because we're going into that ditch. What? Well, I've got to fake an accident. Make like you're unconscious when we're hit, huh? Pete, I don't think this is... Hold on! You all right, Julie? Oh, I think so. Now, just lie, Doggo. What are you going to do with the ignition key? I'm going to throw it away. But, but why? Now, quiet. We've got company. Uh-huh. See that? Mm. The girl wasn't alone in the car. Oh, that man, he, he looks a bit like our taxi driver. Yeah. And a bit like Johnny Michaelis himself. All right, here they come. It looks as though they're unconscious. Mm. We've got to get them out of there and make them talk. They must know where Brophy's daughter is, otherwise why would he have... I know, but I'm not telling Michaelis. Okay, don't don't try anything unless you want this to go off. They were pretending. Oh, the lady's brilliant. Who is she? Veronique, my wife. Rick's mother? No, Veronique is my second wife. All right. Now, just move back. Come on, move back. Now, wait, Troy. Get out of it, baby. Come on. Maybe we can come to some sort of a deal. I've already got a deal. Julie. Hmm? Get into that car. Right, Pete. Uh, Michaela, so I'm taking your car. You can have this one. Go, uh, points. Unfortunately, the ignition key's missing. I'll get you for this, Troy. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, throw that gun from your shoulder holster. Huh? The slowly. Now, I'm watching like a hawk. That's it, nice and easy. There. Okay, give it here. Uh Uh-uh. But first. Hurry, Pete. Coming right now, honey. I'll be seeing you, Michaelis. That's a promise, my friend. Well, here we go again. That'll hold them for a while, until they get to the phone. This jalopy should get us to Faversham in double quick time. Uh-huh. And Brophy's at home right now, I'm ex. Good. Yes, keep a watch on him, a close, close watch. And do exactly as I told you. See you later, and bring a spare gun. Oh, Johnny, this is not going to work. Isn't it? This is a job I have to do on my own. Tries beating you. No one beats Johnny McKillis. Hello, Trunks. This is Rochester 3425. I want to put a call through to London. A personal call to Mr. George Brophy, Claridge's Hotel Mayfair. Yes, I'll wait. You've got to use psychology, Veronique. Psychology? That's right. Brophy's a worried father at this minute. Doubts and fears are going to be assailing his mind. That's an advantage to us. He's going to act on impulse. You hope? I know. Hello? Brophy, this is Michaelis. That's right. The father of the boy you killed. Now listen carefully, Brophy. I have your daughter. That's right, at the place where you hid her. Peter Troy led me right to it. Uh, coming through now, Inspector. Sounds like Miguel is already. Here, give me the headphones. I had a feeling that tapping Brophy's phone might pay off. Now, this is what I want you to do, Brophy. If you want to see your daughter again, you get rid of the police that are watching you. No, I don't care how you do it, but get rid of them. Then you get into your car and you go along the Canterbury Road until you get a mile past Rochester. You stop outside a hotel called the Grey Eagle and you flash your headlights on and off four times. Then you keep on going until you reach the hideaway. That's all. Yes, that's Michaelis, all right. And he says he's got the girl. I don't understand, Johnny. We don't have the girl. We soon will. But I... Brophy's convinced we do have her. He'll lose the police, come here, give us the signal, then we merely have to follow his car. He'll lead us straight to the place where he's hidden his daughter. 
He'll assume that we already know where she is. And he won't take the risk that we're bluffing. The police... He'll find a way of losing them. He's desperate. Yes, he'll lose them, all right. And when he comes to this hotel, he'll be quite alone. We just follow his car, and Rick will be avenged. My, but this is just like the movies. Mm. Big, strong, handsome, private eye to be my bodyguard. Yeah, well, unlike the movies, Miss Brophy, this particular story may not have a happy ending. Unless we get going. Oh, but you're impatient. Be sociable. Let's get to know each other. Did you say dreamy? I think she's a fireball. Miss Brophy... Oh, we've plenty of time. I don't think we have. The plane doesn't leave till 11. Let me send for a bottle of champagne. And Pack we... that suitcase and let's get out of here, huh? Oh, well, okay, but personally, I... What the... They need your baby. They said... Papa! Brophy! What in tarnation are you doing here? Where's Michaelis? Way back towards Rochester. Unless... He's not here? Of course not. But he rang through to me. Told me he had Anita. Oh, no. I shook out the police like he said. It gets I... worse. <laughs> but she's all right. Julie, get those lights off. Yes, Pete. Hey. Hey, well, what the... This is the oldest gag in the book, Brophy. What? It's a setup. Don't a you setup? see? Yes, a setup. Michaelis had no idea where Anita was. But but I... Michaelis have picked up your trail and followed you on out to here. He's probably right behind you. Well, I'm all... All right, now take cover. I think there's going to be some fireworks. I can't see a thing. Well, let's hope Michaelis can't either. I try. Quiet. Listen for him. But the door. Leave it open. You're setting us up as a target. Pete, there's someone out in the corridor. Guess who? Troy, are you in there? The inspector. Troy, Michaelis is somewhere close at hand. Where? We don't know. We lost him about five minutes ago outside. Oh, good night. And we have the place surrounded. The window behind you, Troy. Your daughter's going to die, bro. Anita! Relax. She's all right, Brophy. Pete! It's okay, honey. You can put the lights on again. Troy, what the devil? Michaelis is outside the window, Inspector. What? I think he's probably dead. It was a perfect silhouette against the window. My, but it's been a night. Hasn't it, though? <laughs> that was fancy shooting, Troy. Well, there was nothing fancy about it, Mr. Brophy. Michaelis couldn't see into this room. It was too dark. Yes, He intended but... to fire twice. First shot was to pick his target by the light from the gun's muzzle flash. The second one was the killer shot. But you got in first. Troy always gets in first, Mr. Brophy. Yeah, I'll bet. Mr. Troy, did you know that my papa's a millionaire? Well, what's He that? can buy me most anything I want. Yeah, well, uh, you'll excuse me. I'll go and look after the body. Hey, wait, Inspector. I want to know how you got yeah. here. My papa spoils me, Mr. Troy. I just have to tell him what I want and... He gets it for me. The ice is thin. So? Walk softly, Peter Troy.